Hello, I'm Will from LTA, and let's take a look at what's inside an aero deck. Starting at the power supply, we use a, an AC input module that's shielded and has a built-in EMI filter. That goes to our linear power supply, which uses a low noise Bellison regulator. We've worked with Bellison for many years and uh, have uh, made sure to optimize our circuit to get the best performance out of their very well performing regulators. The linear power supply has a lot of storage capacitance and multiple CLC filter stages. That then feeds the DC to DC section on the larger power and output board. Our DC to DC section, uh, which is uh, development built on years of our own and David Burning's um, circuit design, is I think unique, um, at least in products I've seen, um, in that it is an entirely discrete um, analog circuit. We originally used to hand wind many of these parts, um, that one and that one that one, um, not to mention all of the other power transformers. You know, over the years, we've found some off-the-shelf parts and had some custom parts made that perform equally well or better than the ones we hand-wound and also take much less time and labor to make, which means we can make products that are less expensive for you. In the DC to DC section, the 12 volts comes in and then gets converted to an AC waveform. We have multiple buffer stages to isolate certain sections of the, of the power circuit, uh, depending on where it's going, whether it's going to the digital module, whether it's going to the IV stage, and whether it's going to the analog output stage. So the uh, power supply, you can then follow it over to the digital section. Um, as you can see this large power transformers for, here you can see more um, CLC filters, which get a bit smaller as current demand um, goes down. Traveling up to our digital input board, you can see that we're using multiple uh, very low noise regulators to make sure that all of the voltage rails going to the analog and digital sides of the DAC chip, as well as to the digital input module, have very clean, very stable power rails. We've decided to use the Circe module from HEM for our digital input. In listening tests, we found that it sounded significantly better than other offerings. We also liked the software-based approach, which meant that it could be continually improved and updated over time. And it also meant that we were able to work with HEM to make sure that it functioned ideally with our circuit and our DAC chip. This module takes the inputs and sends an I2C signal out to our DAC chip here, which we hand solder here. Unlike many of the surface mount components that are, that we use a, uh, a vendor that we've been working with for years to, to put on the board, um, because it's a new old stock DAC chip and because um, it's can be sensitive to heat, we make sure that we solder it in a very deliberate and careful way, make sure that there's no slight damage that can happen to that chip uh, during assembly. From the output of the DAC chip, we go to our IV stage, uh, which you can see here and here. We have an active current mirror stage, um, which we found sounded better than the passive solutions that we tried. It presents a much easier load to the DAC chip and it provides a differential output to our Zotal stage. Again, as with everywhere on the circuit, you can see uh, extremely, <laughs> extremely large amounts of storage capacitance um, as close to the circuit as possible. And we use multiple types of capacitors film, tantalum, and different types of electrolytics to make sure that we get the, the best performance as we can out of these circuits. The differential output from the current mirror then feeds the Zotal output stage. 
This is the first balanced zodal stage that we've produced at LTA. And because each section of the balanced circuit is an individually single-ended circuit, and that's single-ended as opposed to push-pull, not single-ended as opposed to balanced, obviously, as it has a balanced output. We had to learn a lot about um, how much more sensitive a single-ended stage is to power supply noise and other factors, and we further refined our power supply circuitry to make sure that as little of that noise as possible was affecting the output. The Zotal stage consists of these components here, which includes these four impedance converters, which we hand wind here. The um, design of the impedance converter has also been um, improved for the arrow, and we've had to, again, because of the demands of the single-ended design and the balanced output, um, greatly increase how tightly matched um, all of these are for each product. That's what you see with the writing on top of each core. These components here are part of the drive circuit for the um, Zotal stage. Um, and then all of these are part of the output filter, which then feeds the output directly over here. The output stage power section, again, a lot of storage capacitance. Um, a lot of storage capacitance locally to each load uh, using multiple types of caps, film and electrolytic. Each channel has its own bank of storage caps isolated from the other channel to get the best performance as possible. The Arrow was, a, was an opportunity for us to really develop a lot of our design for manufacturing and apply what we've learned from a lot of our other products. In the Aero, we wanted everything to come together as uh, simply as possible. So we've reduced the number of boards, um, though it does look still quite complex compared to some things. Um, if you compared it, for example, to one of our integrated amps or some of the older microzodal preamps, you'll see far fewer separate PCBs, far fewer wire interconnections, and that allows us both to build with fewer points of potential failure, build with a shorter signal path, and also assemble things more quickly. We've also been able to include some more fun things we've learned over the years. We started to utilize some 3D printing, and so the brackets for the tube sockets um, underneath the the top bracket, there's a um, single piece 3D printed bracket um, out of a high temperature material that holds the, the octal socket stable and makes sure to reduce any mechanical stress on the tube socket pins. And that's what you'll find inside of your aero DAC.